today and by the grace of God tomorrow the reality of heaven and hell. While I was praying, the Lord ministered to me that I should come and warn you. And anywhere you are hearing the sound of my voice, don't think I am talking to another person or somebody elsewhere. I am talking to you as a person. Whoever you may be, the president of the nation, governor, kings, very important personality, director of companies, high rank in police, or any uniform, whoever you may be, doctor, nurses, lawyer, judge, teachers, farmers, politicians, the Lord sent me to you as a person. Man of God. Man of dignity in the church of God. The Lord sent me to you to come and warn you. And I have vowed to God that I will not hide anything. I will tell you the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. And listen to this. When I come to tell you the truth, I have prepared myself not to eat again at worry or in worry. And I've prepared myself not to receive anything, but I am ready to tell you the whole truth. Because God is going to get angry against me if I saw all these things and I come back to this world to deceive you. So, I am not ready to deceive anybody. I want to speak as an oracle of God to you. I want to tell you the whole truth so that if by the grace of God you make it at last, we will see in heaven and we will embrace ourselves. I pray that so shall it be in Jesus' name. But if at last, with all you are going to hear, if you disobey God, close your ear, you say, Nalai. And eventually, you get to hell and the Nalai letter becomes the truth, you will have to blame yourself. And you will say, that young man was shouting on the altar that day, but I closed my ear to the truth. And to everything to, that happens on earth, there always used to be reward. If you listen to the word of God, you obey the voice of the one speaking, there is reward for it. If you hear the word of God and you turn your face away from listening and your ear from listening to the voice of God, there is always a reward for it. We want to go into the word of God. I will read some verses of the scriptures to you before I give you the topic that I'm going to share with you this evening on the reality of heaven and hell. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. I read first verse 15. See, I have sat before thee or before you, you that is sitting down, you that is watching in your office, you that is watching in your bedroom. You that is watching this cassette in your room or in your sitting room. You that is listening to me, sitting down, looking at me, life. God is saying, I have sought before you this day life and good, death and evil. <laughs> God that is a loving God. 
God that is a caring God. God that is a merciful God. God that is a good giver. God that used to protect people. God that used to heal, deliver, set free. He's the one talking here. He said, see, he's talking to you directly. I have sat before you. Woman, God is talking to you. Man, God is talking to you. I have sat before you this day. This day. This Tuesday. This Tuesday. Life good. Death evil. God said, I said, both of them before you. I said life. I said death. I said evil. I said good. In verse 19, he said, I call heaven. God said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. He's talking to you directly. That I have said before you life and death, blessing and caution. Therefore, the God of mercy is saying, therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Hmm. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy day. The topic we want to consider tonight is what I call the other side of God. The, I want you to write it down. The other side of God. What all the pastors, the priests, the high priests, the great, great men all over the world have been preaching is the goodness of God. That is this side of God. The love of God. It is this side of God. The mercy of God. The grace of God. God as provider. God as miracle worker. If I say, God is good. Every one of you will say, all the time. And nalai. Hello. If I say, God is good. All of you will say, all the time. But, that your answer is lie. You are making what I call, false witness against God. The goodness of God is not all the time. Now listen. God said, go to them, tell them, my other side. Warn them about my other side. Now listen. Every one of you that are present here today, even, even, I honor my Lord Bishop, and I honor my uh, Lord elect Bishop. They are men of God. Is that true of them? Say something now. Is that true of them? Are they men of God? You love them? Are you sure? If you love them, say hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. As my Lord Bishop, and my Lord elect Bishop are sitting down, and you know them to be very good, let me tell you, they have other side. Ask them. As you are sitting down, I'm talking to you, you have other side. Your husband that loves you so much, your dear, have other side. Your wife that you love so much, have other side. 
A woman was talking to me one day. The woman said, <laughs> My husband never knew me. And they have been together for more than 20 years. And he said, He never knew me. I will show him who I am. That woman is talking about her other side. Listen. That, when somebody loves you so much, caring for you, taking care of you, when you are weeping, the, you will see tears coming out of his eye. You must fear that person. Because the day you will see the person's other side, you will not believe yourself. Your husband that loves you so much, I want you to be praying never to see his other side. Your wife that takes good care of you, I want you to be praying so that you will not see your wife's other side. Children, listen to me. Your daddy loves you. But I want you to be praying that you will not see your daddy's other side. A woman got angry against her daughter one day. She began to beat that child mercilessly. And I said, Mama, are you going to kill her? He said, if you want to die, let her die. The, the lady was crying not because of the beating but because it has never happened before. I asked her a question. I called her. I said, since morning your mother got angry against you around 10 and this is around 5. You are still crying. He said, the reason why I'm crying is that I cannot believe myself. I don't know my mother can be as wicked as this. Listen. I know that as we are gathering here, it is not only Anglican church members that are present. Deep allies are here. Redeems are here. Methodists are here. Catholics are here. Perhaps Cherubim and Seraphim and Seleph are here. Now, the body of Christ, I'm talking to you. Listen. Watch out. You don't see the other side of God. God is good in everything. For God so loved the world. He loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten son. That whosoever, whosoever, no matter how terrible you have ever engaged yourself in sin, whosoever, whosoever, come to him, he will in no wise cast out. Because of his love. But listen. As merciful. As loving. As caring. As great. In love God is. Don't try to see the other side. Of God. And that is why he's saying something. In the book of Isaiah. Chapter. 55. Open your Bible to that place. Isaiah chapter 55, God is talking here. He said in verse 6, Seek ye the Lord, why he may be found. <laughs> I want you to read these verses of the scripture with meditation. Reading and meditating and thinking about these words. He says, Seek ye the Lord, why he may be found. <laughs> Call ye upon him while he is near. Now listen. It means there is a time God will be found. When you call upon him that time, he will be found. He says, seek the Lord while he is near. It means there is a time God is near. And I can tell you, in this manifestation 2012, God is is present he's here he's near but the other side of this verse that i read to you is that a time is coming when god will no more be near a time is coming when you will not be able to find him again a time is coming when you will cry 
when you will jump up, when you fall yourself down, knock your head on the ground, knock your head on anything, and every part of your body will be swelling, and you will be crying in an agony of terrible tear. God will be looking at you and he will be laughing. You call the name Jesus and it will be as if that name is Thomas Shaving. Because the time of God's mercy has gone. In the book of Proverbs chapter 1 I will read from verse 23. Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 23. Right now, as we are sitting down here, as you are listening to the sound of my voice, God is saying, Turn you at my reproof. Turn from your evil way at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit. In this program, I will pour out my spirit upon you. If you can turn, I will make known my word unto you. Verse 24. A time is coming. Listen. He says, Because I have called, and ye refused. <laughs> I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. Verse 25. But ye have set at not all my counsel, and none of my reproof. A day is coming. Verse 26. I also, God the loving one, God the merciful, God the provider, God the deliverer says, A day is coming. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you, then shall you call upon me but i will not answer that day is coming you will call upon him he will not answer they shall seek me early but they shall not found me that is the other side of god the other side of god in the book of matthew i want to go into some verses before I go into my testimony, so that you will know that this God you are serving is not a God you can joke with. You are living a wayward Christian life because you don't know that God has the other side. And because you don't know, you can enter into the other side of God. You, all you know about God is that God is merciful. God is love. God is caring. God can provide. God do protect. But you don't know that the God we are talking about can kill and destroy. You don't know it? God that is loving. God that is merciful. God that is honest. God that is taking care of you. God that have not allowed you to die. He also, that same God, can kill and can destroy and can take one soul into hell. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, I read verse 29 to verse 30. If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Somebody is the one that will cast it into hell. And the person that have the right over your soul to cast it into hell is God. Devil cannot do that. Human being cannot do that. The only person that can do that is God. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it up and cut it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body 
should be cast into hell. Hmm. Hmm. In the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 28, And fear not them which can kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. The one that is able to destroy both soul and body into hell. That will not have mercy. Who is that person? Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Verse 5. Verse 4 and verse 5. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after the, that have, have no more that they can do. But, I will forewarn you, whom ye shall fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Now look up here. I have gone through several scriptures. Perhaps I may not go into scriptures again. But listen to this. What we are examining this evening is what I call the other side of God. Of a truth, I had accident on the way from Ibadan to Lagos. And when I had this accident, it was a terrible one. The accident was terrible to the point that they, uh, they rushed me to UCH Ibadan. And there, I came out of this body. The day is coming, my sister and my brother, when you will die, either you like it or not. And I'm warning you tonight, so that when death will come, you will not see the other side of God. The day you die, you will remember what I'm saying now. That after you breathe the last breath, this physical body, which your cloth upon you will be on the bed, your eyes closed or open, your mouth closed or open, the nurse or the doctor will come and close your eyes and close your mouth, put wool in your nose. Whether you like it or not, a day is coming when it will happen to you. My time is very short. I would have been going from verses to verses in the Bible. But when you get home, go and read the book of Second Samuel chapter 14 verse 14. The Bible says, For we, all of us, will need die. And we shall be like water poured on the ground. And will not be able to be gathered up again. Death is inevitable. None of us that are sitting down here today will not die. A day is coming, you will die. If somebody is praying for you and say, Oh, I pray you for you, sister. You will not die. He's deceiving you. If I pray and cast out death and worry, what I'm saying is that I don't want to, you to die before your time. But a day is coming when you will die. And after that, you will come out from your physical body naked. Because naked you came into this world and naked you will go back. Listen to me. There are so many things that happened after death. But I would like to take it from the junction of separation. Because of my time. Because I have a long way to go. After death, there is a place where you will meet your shadow. 
and your shadow will begin to take you from one place to the other. Any place you have ever done wrong to anybody, your, your, your shadow will take you there. Every evil thing you are doing now that nobody is able to correct you because of your level, because of who you are, and because of your position. I am wanting you to correct yourself today before death will come. Because if you do not correct yourself, in death you will regret that you came to this world. Now, after the shadow has shown you everything you've done in the world, then he will tell you, Son of man, we are on our way to junction of separation. Both of you will be lifted up. And you will be running an uncontrollable race. And you will get to the junction. Before you get to that junction, you will get to where all the deaths all over the world are lining up on the same way. You are the last person that came. You will be at the back of the person at the back before you. Immediately you get there. A minute after you get there, if you look back, the people that will be at your back will be more than 5,000. It was there they told me that people that used to die all over the world in a minute are more than 5,000. Evangelists, pastors, prophets, men of God, people that had been highly elevated in the churches and are sitting down. We've done nothing. And we have to do more. I praise the name of the Lord. For my Lord Bishop, I praise the Lord for the late Bishop that God has used for all these things. But yet, I will, with all honor, tell them that they should put more effort to win souls. Because thousands are going to hell every minute all over the world. Thousands. And out of these thousands, Christians are very many in the thousands that are going to hell every minute. As you are on your way, your shadow will be here, you will be by the left side, and shadow will be talking to you. When you get there, the day it comes to your turn, you will remember. Your shadow will be asking you, do you remember the person you used charm to kill? Do you remember when you are a member of witchcraft, the person you called in the night, you killed that la lady, and you drank the blood, and you said you are drinking uh, oil, palm kernel oil, do you remember? Every evil thing you did when you are here on earth, the shadow will be bringing them to remembrance. You will want to come back to this world. It will not be possible. You are having the opportunity now as you are sitting down to turn back to your God before you die. Whoever you may be here on earth after death, what surprised me on the way to heaven is that after death, every human being will become equal. Every human being. Kings, presidents of nations, governors, very important personalities in the community and the beggars in the street. All of them will become like one. On your way to heaven, you will get to a place. I got there. The place is called the junction of separation. When you get there, the day you get there, you will remember. There is a big signpost. It is written upon it. Welcome to the junction of separation. Except a man is born again, 
pray, he cannot see the kingdom of God. When we are talking about being born again, we are talking about genuine born again through genuine repentance. Now listen to me. There are so many people that confess to be born again that God do not know. So many people. The Bible said that he that is born of God does not commit sin. If truly you are born again, you will not be able to commit sin. Even if you want to commit it, the spirit of being born again that dwells in you will not, appear, will not allow you to commit sin. If you are sitting down here and you are confessing to be born again and you are still committing sin, you are not born again. Make sure you are born again this evening. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 17, if anybody is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things, all, not some, all things are become new. If you say you are born again and all things have not passed away, then you are not born again. You can be anything in the church and yet you may not be born again. If you say you are born again and you are street drinking, ah, you are not born again. If truly you are born again, the spirit of God in you, that spirit of holiness, I repeat, that spirit of holiness cannot allow you to drink. Who are the people that the Bible says they should be drinking alcohol? In the book of Proverbs chapter 31 verse 6, the Bible says, give strong drink, give alcoholic to them that are ready to perish. If you confess to be born again and you are drinking alcohol, you are not born again, my brother. Don't deceive yourself. And if people are deceiving you, you don't deceive yourself. Listen to this. If you continue to deceive yourself and you deceive yourself unto death, hey, what will happen hereafter will be terrible. At that junction of separation, there is a signpost here. It is written upon it boldly. Broad and wide is the way that leads to destruction. Many are people that are going there. At this left side, when you get there, you will remember. There's a wide road. Built fried with flowers. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, there is a way similar to man. Very good. But the end of that way is the way of destruction. There is a huge demon standing here. Very huge demon. Having a very dirty hair. Wore a dirty cloth. Cheered cloth. This demon is very huge and black in complexion. The eyes red. And is having by his right hand a bow. And this demon is always shouting at that junction of separation. He's just shouting. <laughs> They did not tell me, but I perceive he's welcoming people that are coming to hell. By this side, there is a narrow way, very narrow. And that road is narrow and rugged. There is an angel beside that very narrow way. The angel wore a very white linen. When I said white, I'm talking about white. White with reflection. And he has on his head a golden crown. Stars at the top surrounding the, head, the crown. And golden cross at the front of that crown. And he has a golden bed in his belly. 
with golden cross and he wore a golden shoe what he's always saying is hallelujah 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 what surprised me most that we are going to pray about now brethren before i say it i warn you love your soul love your soul your soul is very very precious no matter what you achieve here on earth be you a multi billionaire in dollars if you die in sin you will forget everything here and you will go back to meet your God the judge of all hearts naked you will not take anything from this world to great beyond you are going alone and that naked because when you are coming from heaven you brought nothing to this world love your soul your soul is very precious what surprised me at this junction of separation is this without that there's somebody standing and pointing to people that you you follow this way you you follow this way nobody was pointing to anybody we were all on the same line that is why that place is called the junction of separation as we were coming so uh, suddenly i saw so many people in their uncountable numbers you will see as if somebody something is turning them to the left side as they are coming you just see them as they are coming you just see them they, they turn like this they follow the left side in their millions where are they going they are going to hell what surprised me is this although there is no day in heaven what we mean by day is that day come night follow that is one day another day night that is second day there is no night in heaven but let's bring it into the counting of the world sometimes a whole day a whole day that people that will pass by the right side they will more, not more than 10 in number sometimes five sometimes three sometimes two sometimes one there are some days nobody will go to the right side but the left side they are going every minute in their thousands you will be hearing the sound of their feet. Wah, woo, wah, woo, wah. They will be pushing themselves. Stand up on your feet. Do you love yourself? Do you love your soul? I want you to lift up your hands. And pray with all your hearts. That God, anything that resides in me, that is contrary to your will to your word that will make me to go to hell the day i get to this junction of separation remove that thing from me now in the name of jesus i want you to pray that prayer from the bosom of your heart and i want you to pray the prayer loving yourself open your mouth and pray to god in the name of jesus do you love yourself at all Do you love yourself at all? Depression. I don't want to go to the left side. I will want to follow the right side, Lord. Anything in my life that will make me to go to the left side, that will make me to follow the multitude to hell. Oh Lord, I pray. Take it.
Take it away from me. Take it away from me. Take it away from me. In Jesus' name, we pray. Don't sit down. Don't sit down yet. Listen to this. The Lord said to me, I wanted you to describe how hell looks like to them. So that anyone that wants to go there should prepare themselves. Now, after this junction of separation, you will have to pass through 23 halls. And in every hall, they will examine you thoroughly. In every hall. I will make mention of all the 23 halls. Number one, the hall of salvation. Number two, the hall of restitution. The hall of forgiveness. That's number three. Four, the hall of giving. The hall of worldliness. The hall of works. The work you did in the church of God. All are being recorded. And you are going to give account of everything you do in the church of God. If you destroy the church of God, you will pay for it. You will pay for it, severely pay for it. If you do God's work with all your heart, you will pay for it. If you call yourself a man of God and you enter into cult and destroy the church of God, you will pay for it. Then, the hall of idle words, the hall of accountability, the hall of love, the hall of virtue, good virtue, good character, good behavior. The hall of separation from the world. The hall of consecration. The hall of self-sacrifice. The hall of soul winning. The hall of standing firm in the world. The hall of perfect heart. And number 17, the hall of faithfulness. Faithfulness towards God and towards man. Hmm. Number 18, the hall of mercy. You are asking for God's mercy, but you are not merciful to people. You will pay for it. Hmm. 19, the hall of walking uprightly. 20, the hall of humility. So many people, when they are, they are nothing, they will be humble. But let them get to the top. They become devil in character and pride. You will pay for it. You will pay for it. The hall of fearfulness and unbelief. And 22, the hall of the fruit of the spirit. And the last one, the hall of holiness. All these 23 halls you will pass through before you can get to heavenly border. But at this junction of separation, the Lord said I should show you, tell you how hell looks like. Listen to me. Look at me. Don't sit down. Please don't sit down. And my father's in the Lord. I'm sorry. Please don't sit down. Now listen. When you get to that doctrine of separation, I pray for you. I pray for all of us here. And I pray for all the men of God. That the day you get to that doctrine of separation, the Spirit of God will help you here on earth. You must have amend all your ways before you die. So that you will go through the right side. In Jesus' name. Though many are called, but few will pass through that side. But out of the few that will pass through there, I pray, honestly pray for you that you will be one of them. Now listen, I want to talk on hell. When you get to the junction of separation, if you don't believe what I'm saying now, you don't believe what you have been hearing since yesterday, and all that you are going to hear all through this week, and eventually you die, and you face the left side. As you are going. In the initial stage. It will look beautiful. Flowers on the road. But it will get to a place. You will get to this very ugly and dreadful road. And before you get there. It will be as if somebody, you will hear a kind of sound. As if somebody is pursuing you. With fear. You will not know when you pick race. You will begin to run. Wah, 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 wah. There are nails on the road to hell. Nails. If you raise your hair, leg, you put it down, your leg will enter easily into those nails. 
You will remove your leg and you put this one down, your leg will enter easily into those nails. You will be running. And as you are running, so you will be shouting, Jesus! Jesus! Come and deliver me! Come. I mean, those people who have ever gone to church before, those who had the word of God, they, they, they will not do what they are hearing. And those who are preaching that word, but they are not doing what they are preaching, all of them on their way to hell, they will be crying, Jesus, come and deliver me. But Jesus will not hear. It is too late. Immediately you face the way to hell. Hell fire is like a magnet. It's used to magnet the people that are coming into it. Immediately you face on the way to hell. The fire, the heat of that fire will magnet you anywhere you are. It will be pulling you. See. See. And you will be running. As you are running, there will be so you will be shouting, Oh God! Oh God! Have mercy on me! Have mercy on me! I want to go back! I want to go back! Jesus! Come and take me away from this road! I don't want if you turn to this side, the fire will turn your face back to the road. You turn to this side, the fire will turn your face back to the road. You will be running far, 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 far. Until you will be hearing the sound of the people that were there before you. Some of them will shout, God, I had this message. They bring this Jesus to me. But I thought they were joking. God, now I have given my life to Christ. Come and take me from this place. Some people will say, it was my boyfriend oh, that did not allow me to hear the truth. Some will say, it was my girlfriend oh, I wanted to do the will of God. She was the one working just of me. I thought it was a lie. I did not know it is real. I did not know it is true. Some will shout, God, it's not my fault. It was my pastor who did not tell me the truth because I have money. I have money. I was rich. He could not tell me the truth. I pray for you, pastors. You will not be guilty of the blood of your members. I can't hear you people say amen, amen for pastors. You no, know, there are pastors that will not tell the president the truth. <laughs> Take me to president. I will tell him the truth. There are bishops, archbishops, popes, uh, uh, apostles, general apostles, and other ranks in the world. They will get to the governor. They will not tell them the truth. But I thank God and I believe it. Not as the bishops that are sitting down here. I know that with all I see in them, if they get to them, they will tell them the truth. Now listen to this. If you call yourself a man of God in the congregation, and if you call yourself a man of God here, and you are not telling people the truth, you will pay for it. Too. You will pay for it. As you are running, when you are getting closer to that door, the everlasting door, that rugged, terrible, tattered door, ugly door, you will see the darkness cover the whole hell. The darkness that covers hell is as thick as this altar. You imagine in yourself, you close your eyes and you are in fire. You want to open your eyes, you cannot open your eyes. And fire is eating you up. I pray you will not go to hell in Jesus' name. As you are running, so you will get to a place. That everlasting door will open. The fire will be coming to meet you. Woo, 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 woo. It will catch you. Bam. Draw you into, into the bottomless pit. And the everlasting door will close. If you see the heat of the fire. If you see the demons torturing people in hell, hell, I don't pray that my dog will go to hell. I don't pray 
for my hen, hen, I'm talking of hen, chicken, to go to hell. I don't pray for my worst enemy human being to go to hell. I don't pray. I don't pray it. And I'm praying for you. Please, and I'm warning you, don't go to hell. Don't try it. Don't have everything on the world, in this world and go to hell. If you do it, you will regret forever. Hell. 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 It's a, a place of torment. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. Please don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. You cannot, you cannot stand hell. You cannot stand the touch of hell. You can't. Anything that will take you to hell, do away with it. Anything. I repeat. I repeat. There was this man in Lagos. He called me. He said, man of God. He said, I pray that I don't want to go to hell. And God said, if you don't want to go to hell, there is government money that is with you. Go and call your auditor to come and check it. And he said, when they checked the money, it was about 250 million. He restored the 250 million back to the government. And God said, now, you will get to heaven if you die now. Anything that will lead you to hell, do away with it. Don't play with your soul. Your soul will be in a place forever and ever. How do you pe think people used to cry in hell? Do you think they will be crying? <laughs> no. Ah! Hell? They cry? They weeping? They wailing? They torture in hell? <sighs> Let me try. Let me try. Look at me here. I want to try to act how they cry in hell. Now listen. What I want to do now is not up to 2% of the way you are going to cry when you get to hell. Not up to 2%. Not up to 2%. Look at me. One will be in the ear. One will be all over the body. One will be eating up every part of their body. Every part of their body. One will be eating up the eye. One will fool your tongue. And you see people. As the worm is eating them up and the fire is burning their body, you see them, they say, Ah! 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 God, please forgive me. Hey! Jesus, where are you? Ah! 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 Forever and ever. Raise up your hand. God. I'm not talking of all of you. You that love your soul. Not everybody loves their souls. You that love your soul. God. Any sin I have ever committed. That will take me to hell. Forgive me today. I remove that sin from me. Lord, any sin I have ever committed that will take me to hell, forgive me, Lord, and remove me from that sin. Use the blood of Jesus to wash me today. Open your mouth and pray to God in the name of Jesus. Pray to God. Pray to God. Pray to God. You are praying the last prayer. You are praying the last prayer for now. Praise to God. I don't want to go to hell, Lord. I don't want to go to hell, Lord. I don't want to see your other side, Lord. I don't want to... Yes, Daddy. Yes, Daddy. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear what the Lord says. The Lord said, I should tell you if you love. He says, Tell them I want to save now. That is what I had. 
any one of them that want to be delivered from sin, you know there is a sin in your life. Listen, if there is any sin in your life and you die with it, you are going to hell. That's the plain truth. Be it small lie, lie small. The one you call small. Devil is the author of sin. If there is small lie in you, small anger in your life, small bitterness in your life, any sin in your life, if that sin still remains there before you die and you die in it, you are going to hell. And God is telling me, tell them I want to have mercy. Tell them I want to save souls. Tell them this time, this moment, I want to save them. If you want God to save you now, please forget about I've been in church for more than 40 years. That is irrelevant words. Nothing concerns God with that. You hear what I said? If you know there is sin in your life, that is the matter. He that is committing sin is of the devil. Anybody that cover his sin or her sin will not prosper. That is the word of God. If you know there is sin, forget about I have been in the church for more than 50 years. Nothing concerns God with that, my brother. You will see tomorrow that nothing concerns God with that. If you know there is sin in your life and you need mercy of God, as we We'll be praying this prayer. I want you to open your eyes and come out. Don't hide yourself. And this is how we are going to pray. Lord, I am going out to receive your mercy. Have mercy on me tonight. I don't want to go to hell. That's it. Open your mouth and pray to God in the name of Jesus. As you are coming. Come out anywhere you are. If you love yourself. Just stand up there. Come out anywhere you are if you love yourself. No, stand up, stand up. Move up backward a little. I want to see your face. Move backward a little. Lace up your two hands to God. Hey, I don't want you to come out with, uh, and they say we should come out. That's why I come. No! If that is the reason you come out, stay where you are. I'm talking about the people who want to be delivered from the power of sin. You want God to have mercy on you. You want God to deliver you. You don't want to go to hell. You don't want to go to hell. You want mercy of God. You are saying, oh God, I don't want to go to hell. Here am I, Lord. Deliver me, Lord. Put out our prayers and pray in it. God, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. God, here am I. I don't want to go to hell. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I don't want to go to hell. How much of you, God? How much of your God? How much of your God? How much of your God? Deliver me from power of sin. Deliver me from the power of sin. In the name of Jesus. 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 I don't want to go to hell. 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 Jesus, 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 I don't want to go to hell. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me, Lord. I don't want to see your other side, Lord. I don't want to see the other side of God. It is a terrible thing to fall into the hand of the angry God. For our God is a consuming fire. I don't want to go to hell. Lord, I'm not sure of me. Lord, I'm not sure of me. I don't want to go to hell, Lord. I don't want to go to hell, Lord. I don't want to go to hell, Lord. I break every covenant between me and the devil, Lord. I break every covenant between me and witches and wizards, Lord. I break every covenant between me and the darkness of this world. I break every covenant between me and demons, Lord. I don't want to go to hell, Lord. Jesus' name we pray.
look at me. Look at me. Please look at me. I'm not deceiving you. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you what I saw. Hell is terrible. Hell is terrible. The agony of hell is too much. Don't go to hell, please. Please don't go to hell. Don't go to hell, please. <laughs> don't go to hell, please. Don't go to hell, please. Don't go to hell, please. Don't go to hell. <laughs> Before my Lord Bishop will come and pray for you. Raise up your hand to God. I say, God, please have mercy on me. Don't let me go to hell. Don't let me go to hell. Don't let me see your other side, Lord. God, don't let me see your other side. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> I don't want to go to hell. Escape for your dear life. Escape for your dear life. Your life is precious. Your life is precious. Escape for your dear life. Don't allow the devil to destroy you. Close your eyes and pray to God. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to give the phone, now, phone uh, the, the microphone to my Lord Bishop to pray for you. If I come back to pray the last final prayer with you. But listen to this. Listen to this. Look at my eye. Look at me. I'm 50 years of age this year. My first child is in university. If I'm crying like this, I'm not a fool. It is what I saw. Don't go to hell. Don't see the other side of God. When God closes his eyes, when the eyes of God of mercy close, nobody can open it. Don't go to hell. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Lay your right hand on your chest. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I am a sinner. I don't deceive myself. I know it. He that is committing sin is of the devil. And the wages of sin is death. Lord, I don't want to go to hell. Deliver me from the power of sin. As your servant will pray for me now. Let the power of sin in my life break off. Let it be broken. Share my name from the book of death. And write my name in the book of life. In Jesus name. Close your eyes. Gracious Father, a day you are ready to show mercy. Merciful God, you chose a day like this, not desiring that we perish, but to draw us closer to you, that we do not go to hell. We thank you for a day like this. You are a merciful God, quite all right. You are a loving Father. But it's quite clear that you are a consuming fire. And that you have that other side. That when we remain stubborn, you leave us at our own peril. But here we are today, through your servant. You have opened our eyes to see all our senses at their alert. To know that, Lord, even now you can forgive us. 
so that we do not go to hell. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray. You was promised that any that come to you will never turn back. You have said, when we forgive, when we forsake our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We ask therefore, Lord, that that blood of your Son, our Lord and Savior, shed for us on the cross of Calvary, we are torn for us now. Amen. Let there be a blotting of our transgressions. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And we ask hereafter that that which we have come to confess today give us the power that will never go back. Amen. Give us the power that will never go back. Amen. Because your word says those that believed in your name, you gave the power to become the children of God. Give us the power, therefore, to be overcomers of that besetting sin that would have taken us to hell if not for this opportunity. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for forgiving us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.